Hey there, Dan Reed, the Culinary Libertarian here. I'm doing an introduction video for a, well, kind of a series thing that I want to do. It's um, all just kind of an idea, but I, the idea is to discuss some of the cottage food kinds of things going on, but really, well, that's part of the focus. The real focus is on, well, taking back our food and there's there's a lot happening at the federal level which probably oughtn't be happening at the federal level i think and there is a fair few people who agree well <laughs> yeah agree with me i agree with them uh joel salatin uh john moody who's been on the podcast and those two together uh, are hosting a conference in january called the rogue Food Conference, which is appropriately named. And there's a lot of people around the country who are really interested in taking back control of food for themselves, for their part of the country. And that's kind of what cottage food is about a little bit. Well, a lot of it, but there's, there's more to it than that. And I want to start talking about some of the people who are having success in that area and how we can... Uh, get more success and what does success mean and what does that look like? Um, getting away from the reactionary departments such as the FDA who don't only, they, they only come into action when something happens. Making, so I think they want us to think that where would we be without them? The whole idea overlooks the concept that the people who grow the food, the farmers, the dairy farmers, whatever they are, whoever the butchers, they know best how their food should be. And if there's something wrong, no one knows before them. And, and to suggest that you can't trust a farmer or a craftsman or a herdsman or a candle maker to make a wholesome product, well, that's a bigger problem that I can't address, but th that's part of the problem, I think, is that we've decided or have been convinced that we need top-down, overbearing regulation that comes into effect afterward when something bad happens. And that partly overlooks that the processes that led to a contamination of, say, ground beef. That's kind of a popular one, and I read something recently that that was, again, in the news. And it's a big deal, and it's important. People ought not be poisoned or made sick or made unwell by food that they eat. Will that happen? Of course. Why? It's food. Things happen. It's a biological entity. That can't be avoided the magnitude of some of those things can be avoided. And I think part of the problem is the regulation, regulations that are from the top down that tend to allow for a lack of common sense and other, it gets complicated fast. And we're going to break some of this stuff down. So this is getting outside of the introductory part. Hi, hello, of, of what I want to do. But I want to at least get this first video out to say that more are going to come. And uh, there are lots of good authors, both of books and of columns. There's lots of good people on the ground just trying to make ends meet, do a good job, feed their communities wholesome food without the intrusion of the FDA and the USDA. And... The, my friend Michael Bolden at the Tenth Amendment Center, who's also been on the podcast, uh, is often making the point that the group of people with the best and very visible success with decentralization, which is what really we're talking about. We want to take this central thing and break it down, make it decentral, really down to the community and get, get the top-down central planner stuff out of it. It's not necessary, it's just, it's just not. So the cannabis folks, well, you don't have to really be somebody who wants cannabis. You might even be opposed to cannabis entirely, 
but as a group of people working to make something that they want to consume, which is their right, make something that they want to consume legal to consume, which doesn't harm anybody else, that really shouldn't be a problem. And they are having amazing success, and it's, you know, okay, we want to say, oh, Cheech and Chong, man, he wants to wear brownies. It's not that. And it might be that. There's people who are using cannabis for pain management and for disease management, and there's just lots of reasons cannabis is very, very helpful and healthy and disease management. How could that be bad? Well, it's not bad, but we'll talk about one of the reasons uh, why that's being challenged. So anyway, hello again. Uh, Dan, we're going to be doing, uh, I'm going to call it maybe food freedom, unless I can come up with a better idea, uh, because I think that's what we're trying to get here, is just have access to the foods that we grow and the food that we want to eat from the guy across the street who grew it, or the guy across town, or in the, some other part of your same state. Not when you live in Oregon and you eat, you know, something from Maine. That's a lot of miles, and there's, there's nothing wrong with that, but we don't have a choice. And so really this is about food freedom. Let's get a choice. Let's make the decision about what we're doing with our dollars, and those dollars are going to have impact along the way, starting with helping out the people in your community, at your farmer's market, or at your, you know, Aunt Sally's kitchen. If you have a cottage food business in your town, and she makes great bagels or brownies or whatever, go find her. She's on the internet. Go buy from her. Go to the farmer's market. We can bring slowly this decentralized idea into action by finding the people who are involved in it if for no other reason that they just want to have a little bit of extra money for dinner on the table or shoes for the kids or who knows what it doesn't really matter let's but we're going to do this together and this is the end of the introduction and we'll be seeing you around let me know how you liked it and hit the subscribe button down there somewhere uh, ring the bell and we'll see you around